song is with praise to God. Spirit who dwells within us, so God, may we experience your manifest presence this morning here. As we sing of your great love, God, your amazing grace toward us, and we are thankful. Lord, we offer ourselves to you, our everything. And as we begin this year, God, we commit ourselves in this church and all outreaches thereof to you. Have your way in standing in the gap. Have your way in our volunteering. Have your way in our giving projects. Have your way and maybe other things that we have never thought of or maybe we haven't presented before that it's really the direction you see us going <coughs> that you want us to go. You see us, you want us to go. Or we commit ourselves to you, God, this morning.
And the turbulence of our world, the things that surround us. And as we begin this new year and this season of winter that surrounds us, whether it's internal or external pressures or experiences that would weigh upon us, we trust in you, the rock, the anchor in the storm, to hold us in this life. And we trust you to guide us through the storm. As because we do not weather it alone. We weather it with you as our guide. And with those gathered around us and those that are unable to be with us today and many others, we will meet this semester, this season, this quarter, these coming months, these coming weeks. <coughs> we will weather these storms together. We are not alone. We praise you. We give you thanks for those that are gathered next to us this morning, that we're able to gather with them and know that we have a supporter, an ear, a shoulder, arms, a partner, a brother, a sister, for this season, and beyond. So as we gather in, that, in this community now, we just ask again that you would reveal yourself to us anew from your word. You would encourage us, you'd send us forth today with new understanding, with encouragement, and empowered to do what you've called us to do, to be what you've called us to be in Jesus' name. I do want to just take a moment as we are, as we're here in this uh, place and as we shared some prayer requests and praises just to pray. Just a general prayer over those things that were mentioned, uh, and I will be putting out the prayer email. So I think I had it out a couple times last month. We'll keep get back on top of that this month. And so we want you for that in your email address, uh, your in inbox, if you have the prayer request posted, and uh, other people besides this group are praying for these things, and also praising God with us for the things that are mentioned. So that's pretty awesome. Let me just offer a prayer for these this morning. God, you already know the needs that we have before we come. You hear us right now. You heard us this whole time. You're more than aware, and you know better than we even know. The situations that we're asking for prayer for, as well as the things that we're, uh, we're praising for, you know what happened, you know what you did, and you know uh, how things worked out. And Lord, yet we come as your children, and we come as followers of Christ. We give you thanks. We don't take for granted the things that you've done for us, and the things that you're doing in this world. Working in people's lives, leading people to salvation. That's exciting. God, we, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for those new brothers and sisters in Detroit that have come to know you. We thank you for the salvations, if you look back, that have come uh, through this community and through our outreaches. We thank you for those that have come to know you for the first time, or maybe come to know you better even. Also, we, we thank you for those things. We thank you for, and we, we praise you, God, for the opportunities we've had to be a blessing this weekend, even, and over the break. And God, I just ask that all the impact, all the impact that we've made, it would not be um, a temporary impact, but it truly be uh, an eternal impact. The things that were shared, the life that was shared with others, whether it's at Cran Hill or, or serving in other places and churches throughout this last, even over the break, that those would be things that you would carry on and bring much fruit out of ministries we've served in, the ways that we've shared our lives with others, offering hope and love and truth. We pray for direction for our lives, whether it's employment, future career plans, education, whatever it may be, we know, I know there are needs here. God, we just pray in the name of Jesus. As a community here, I'm praying we're all agreeing today for the needs that are here that are part of this extended community for those that maybe aren't even here tonight. We 
We pray for your safety, for those that are traveling over the season. God, we know we always pray that. Maybe it seems like it's just kind of cliche we do it, but we do it with intention. We do pray, God. We care about the people we're praying for. So we pray for safe travels. We pray especially for Doug who travels as a part of his career. We pray for the safe travels on the road as he drives, as well as for all the others that will be traveling for whatever purposes over the coming days, weeks, and even months of this winter season. We pray for your guidance in our life, not only for employment, for careers, but also for our finances. We might be good stewards what we've been given, and that you'll be a provider. God, we know you're the provider already. Jobs, friends, family, those are maybe sources that you use, or people or a situation that you use to help to guide us or to provide for us, but we know you are the ultimate source. So God, we give you thanks now. And we seek you, God, for all of our needs, for the things that we have need of. We know that you need, we know the need of right. We know that. We ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would guide this church, you guide us as individuals and as a community. More in, to look more like Christ, you would refine us more. You guide the outreaches, you would lead us forward. You would bring in the right people to serve in the right places. You would draw new people into this church community, into our outreach, to the gap. But in all this, God, all the things we can pray, all the needs, all the concerns, ultimately, God, we just pray you be glorified. As we commit ourselves to living lives that glorify you, being obedient to your word. And we repent if there's any ways that we're not currently being obedient to your word you've called us to, or in general. So we're missing, we pray you show it to us. Lord, I do pray that this church, as we begin this 2017 year, would truly be a vibrant part this community, that we would make a difference, and it would be seen, and not for our glory, but for yours, as we just obediently follow what you call us to do, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I had a kid's message, uh, kind of a short kid's message planned this morning, um, but you know, we have Heidi and then two little ones, I'm not sure how much the little ones will pay attention, and I'm sure Heidi will, we'll, we'll kind of share a little bit of what I'm going to share in the kid's message as a part of our annual overall gathering anyway, so, and I do, I will use the Explorer's bag. For those that have been around Lost and Found for a while, you may remember back in the summer, I think it was, started the Explorer bag, this is like our kids' message time, like, secret what's in the bag kind of a thing, so there are some things in here, and maybe I'll give out to you guys this morning, because this will be relevant. Uh, I usually give it out to the kids during the little message around the table, but this morning as well, I'll just include it in another one. Um, but before I get to all of the message, as we're kind of I want to give out a couple things this morning. So if you guys, I know for our students who are coming back, you guys are really excited about getting syllabi and all your handouts for first week of classes. This is not that's not what this is. This is just information. Uh, pass these around. I guess we can grab one of those. I guess the syllabi is uh, information, but this is not something that's requiring you to necessarily do anything for study. Um, well, maybe a little bit, but not too much. All right. This is for uh, kind of get us a little bit, as again, part of my goal today was to kind of um, prepare us to get us thinking back um, to the past of this church and to the past of maybe our lives as a part of this church, and whatever the hollow on that's been, and our part of the outreach of this church we've been in, we stand in the gap or other things. Today is a day of remembering of looking back, thinking about what, what God, what has God done for and to us, that is the focus of this morning. But before we get to that, I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit, and this will kind of relate a little more, um, the second sheet of handout relates a little more to what we're going to be talking about next week, and the coming week, very practical stuff. But this first sheet, it said, Lost and Found Church 2016 FY, that means fiscal year, for those that didn't know FY means business, the office and stuff. The FY is fiscal year. That means like from January through December. Uh, I sent this out to some folks in the church recently via email. I want to hand it out here this morning just so you can kind of look back at where we've been. This primarily is about our Sunday morning gatherings. Now recognize and I recognize and I want to make it very clear, Lost and Found Church is not just Sunday mornings, although this is one of our primary times where we come together and we, we include a lot of different elements of being church together on Sunday morning. We have other parts too. I'll leave some things giving, but so the little chart here, this little table, kind of shows where we were this last year. So it's probably good to kind of look back. 
some numbers. If you're a numbers person, it's kind of makes you happy, but if it doesn't, that's okay. It's, at least gives you a picture of where we've been. Total Sunday morning gatherings. Four, we gather we gathered 44 times. At least a, I had a record of 44 gatherings. We maybe gathered a couple more times. I didn't have attendance information for it. So at least 44, maybe around 46. Total offerings that I had record of anyway, $7,188. So offerings that came in the plate. Um, I think one time we had somebody drop money in the, in the mailbox outside, which is kind of interesting. But um, as far as Sunday morning gatherings and other offerings, $7,188. Uh, there are budgets on the back table if you're interested in looking at a budget for the coming year. But that's, that number is a part of that when we look at how much this comes in. Part of the budget kind of look back on is how much came in for the year. Average weekly offering, just taking all the total that was given, divided by the weeks um, that we had record of, and that was the average weekly offering is $162. Total first time guests we had, people who came for the first time, we didn't double count anybody, it's just total amount of people who came for the first time ever during 2016. 27. Now, included in that were some people who came for a district event. We had the youth event last January, so that was a, a number of those. But there were a lot of other people, too, that came that were first timers. 27. Awesome. Average weekly attendance, how I figured anyway, was 16. That includes children. Highest attendance we've ever had for adults, 16 adults on a Sunday morning. Uh, lowest attendance of adults is four. Sweet meat. Even though there's four adults here, we still do it. Uh, highest attendance for children, we had one week we had 11 kids, that's awesome. And the lowest attendance we had was one. So we've always had at least a child in the room <laughs> for the gathering. And then our highest uh, total attendance total was 24, I believe that was the week we had the youth come this day. But the highest be below that was 23, we had 23 people a couple times. So highest total we've had on a Sunday morning gathering here, including children, is 24. The lowest attendance, five. So if you do the math on that, we have four adults and one kid in one week. <laughs> the lowest attendance you've been. So that just kind of gives you a little look back on where we've been uh, last year as far as our Sunday gatherings. So hopefully that's helpful. And this will be important as we look forward to next week and the coming weeks on getting very practical about where I believe we should think about, and I think we can work toward, some concrete goals as far as I mean, I, I believe we would like, want to see more people come into a Sunday morning gathering. Not just having people show up and leave, but I think, I, I think, when we gather together here, we want to see people coming because when they come, that means that they're going to get to know us, we get to know them, we can build relationships, we can be encouraging, we can get involved, we can serve together. It's not just a but, what they call it, BIC, the butts and chairs. That's not what we're about, right? So I would, I would think that that principle of mind, we want to see that number be more, or average attendance be up. Mm. As a part of our overall ministry. So this will be important as we think for 2017. What would we want 2017 numbers on this kind of a chart to look like? And then how do we do that? If we think there should be more, if these numbers should be higher, then what is it going to take to do that? Those are some questions we'll be talking about and some we'll make some concrete plans next week. Alright? So think about this. This is something to look at. Hopefully it helps you. Um, whether or not you're an administrative type person, I think this should be helpful to see where we've been so we can think about where we're going. Does that make sense? Okay, get one. Okay. <clears throat> this other sheet here, we'll talk about at the end here. This is just uh, our next three months. I like to plan in quarters. So a quarter for a year is three months, right? Divide the year by four, you get three months, right? So our quarters are um, first, second, third, and fourth. The first quarter is January, February, March. These are just some events that I have kind of laid out um, for this coming quarter. So hold on to this. Um, I want to talk a little maybe a little more briefly about this at the end again, but just kind of note some of the things that are regular. Obviously, our community hey. meeting last Sunday every month. We've got a Super Bowl party coming up. That's an outreach. Invite your friends, family, people to come to that. Membership seminar. We'll talk more about that. But here, just, just to kind of give you a rundown of the next three months, as I see it for Lost and Found, and some of the things that we're doing outside of just our Sunday morning worship gathering. Okay? That's what this is for. If you have any, if you have any questions, think about that and ask them again. So, this morning, I want to flip to Exodus chapter 12. If you have a Bible, grab a Bible out. Um, if you don't have a Bible, there's some on the table back there, over there, and over there. Exodus chapter 12, starting in verse 1 and going through verse 28. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. 
12, starting in verse 1, and going through, through verse 28. So I'm going to read, uh, let's say, verses 1 through 11. First, to start, and then we'll pass it off to someone else. You are to determine the amount of grain needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old animals without a day of the month, without a defect. You may be taken from you may take them from the sheep or the goat. Take care of them until the fourteenth day of the month. Well, the people of the community of Israel are to find them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put them on the sides and tops of the doorkins of the houses. Prayer where with bitter herbs, oh, they are to eat the lamb. The same night they are to eat the gross soup over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the fire. Head like inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked in your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. This is the Lord. It's the Lord's hand. So I'm going to read verses 12 through 28. Destructive fire will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to celebrate. <coughs> For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festive to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat eat bread without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses. For whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day to the seventh must be cut off from Israel. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly, and another one on the seventh day. Do not work at all on these days, except to prepare food for everyone to eat. That is all you may do. Celebrate the festive of all unleavened, unleavened, unleavened bread, because it was on this very day that I brought my provisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ornament for the generations to come. In the first month, you are to eat bread made without yeast from the evening of the fourteenth evening of the fourteenth day until the evening of the twenty-first day. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your houses, and anyone, whether foreigner or native-born, who eats anything with yeast in it, must be cut off from the community of Israel. Eat nothing made with yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. Right, stop for a second. So, what's going on here? Just to kind of I know there's a lot of passage here. We've got a few more put verses to go, but kind of what what's going on? You guys, you guys know the story. I mean, just I know some know it. Passover. Yeah. Well, yeast in, many, in the culture represented sin. It had to do with sin. That's at least one thing that kind of derived from all that. But more than that, though, um, it seems that it comes a little later too. But like taking to make. Bread with leaven takes time because what is, what is leaven all about? It's a like yeast, right? So yeast, leaven is yeast. So what is it when you're making bread with yeast? What do you have to do when you're making bread? Have you ever made bread with yeast? Like everything, let it sit. You have to let it sit. It takes time, right? It takes time. God is about to do something. It's going to be quick, and He wants them to get out of there quickly. And so, if you're going to make bread for your journey or to eat, you can't really wait, right? You need to go quick. And so God said, make bread without leaven, so that you can 
get on you quickly, right? You have bread, you're gonna you're gonna go quick. And that comes and there's a lot of symbolism that comes out of it later on. I'm gonna get ahead of myself. So, so is this connected to like, the leaving of the Pharisees? Right, yeah. I mean well, if you get back to that, there's there's some elements there too. Um, but later on, especially the idea of, of I, I jumped ahead of myself when I started, it was it's one of those mornings. Uh, where then leaven later on becomes this representation of sin. In this case, it has to do with specifically, they need to get moving quick, so get you can't put the leaven in it because you can't wait for the bread to rise. God's going to do it that quickly, and I think it's something we got to know this, right? So um, notice what's going on here, though. I want to point out a kind of interesting point in the overall context of what, of what we've, it bef- comes before this in Exodus. In Exodus, if you remember, Moses Hello. is going to lead the people of Israel, right, out of where they've been slaves for a long, long time, Egypt. Moses is basically called by the Lord, in essence, to lead his people out of Egypt as slaves. He's going to take them out. How does God accomplish, uh, try to accomplish getting them out of the, na- of, of the nation? You remember what he does? Plagues, right. He has plagues that he, these, these bad things that happen to the nation of Egypt. All right? He sends darkness and gnats and frogs and turns the river to blood and all this stuff. Two, and if you guys have ever seen the movie, you know, these movies where it kind of depicts this, different cartoons and stuff. <clears throat> God is trying to get his people out of slavery. He's trying to deliver them out of slavery, out of this nation, this powerful nation in the world, and he's using, we call them plagues, right? Bad things are happening to Egypt. And this is the last one. Now, all the other plagues, they have an, a direct effect upon Egypt, but the people of Israel... <laughs> are generally not affected by what's happening. Now here, there's going to be this, we call it Passover, the angel of death, God's destruction is going to come upon all firstborn in the nation, and the Israelites are called, and anybody, who well, actually, who puts blood from this lamb on the door frame of their house, the, this death will pass over them, right? So we get the word Passover, right? So you're learning something, if you haven't heard that before. Now, what's interesting about this account is that it's kind of doing two different things. It's describing, this account we're reading in Exodus, it's number one, it's describing what happened. It's saying, this is what God, this is like, this is like, okay, we're reporting it. But also it's saying what? Here's how you're going to celebrate this, and you're going to remember this later, right? So it's describing how this holiday, if you will, or a holiday which is meant to what? Help you to remember. This is how you're going to celebrate it later, and this is what's happening right now. You kind of see that? So, like, really in this account, it's kind of two different things kind of side by side. Here is what, the, what this plague looked like. It's a really bad thing, what the Israelites were called to do. Like, take care of this lamb for four days, then you're going to sacrifice it. You're going to put blood on the doorposts. There's so much imagery here. We talk a lot more about this around Easter time. But if you even go back to the very beginning of chapter 12, the Lord said, this is, this month, when this is all going to take place, when he's going to start this plague, is to be for you the what? First month, the first month of your year, verse 1. Or actually, verse 2. So this is, okay, there you go, hang on. This is where the, this is where the bag comes in. So this, in a sense, is <laughs> New Year. <laughs> it's a new year for the people. Oh. Right? God is going to deliver his people and for them from that time forward. That month is going to be the first month of months. Your new year, your celebration. This is exciting stuff. But it's very dark and it's, very, it's a very tough thing because they're facing death and destruction, right? So in this passage we're reading, there's two things going on. It's a description of what they were dealing with then. And also, hey, this is what they're going to be like later on. As I work with you as a people, this is how you're going to remember this event beginning of a new life, if you will, as a nation, as a people. And he goes through all these details of how they're going to take care of this lamb. And again, there's many more details we're going to. But they want you to understand what's going on. That they're going to have to not leaven the bread because they got to get out of there quick. They're going to make a sacrifice. And that blood on their doorpost is a sign. They're being obedient to God, making a sacrifice of their own that God might pass over. And then God might also show his grace to them to pass over. Verse 20, I'm just going to read to the end here, actually, if that's okay, Mercedes. Uh, verse 21 through verse 28. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top 
and on both sides of the door frame. But none of you shall go out of, your, of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame, and he'll pass over that doorway. Again, pass over. <clears throat> he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you, as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the, Lord, then the people bowed and worshipped. <clears throat> the, peop- the Israelites did what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. <coughs> So again, the story of Passover, which generally, again, we usually talk more about this at Easter time, about the significance of how does this tie to Jesus. There are so many parallels to what Jesus did, a lamb sacrificed, right, that people might not die but have everlasting life, right? You see the imagery here? There's great parallels. So when Jesus, when we see what Jesus did, the people back then that knew these stories, like hopefully like us today, would see that there's a much bigger narrative, a much bigger story that's being played out here than just some guy randomly doing something or God doing some new thing. There's imagery from way back. So we looked, about the, looked at the context of this. At the beginning, it's the, again the, the new year, right, for the people, a new beginning, much like we've had our new year recently. We think about new beginnings, new life. The people of Israel had to make a choice, too, didn't they? If you think about this context, they had to decide... Were they going to obey God and make the sacrifice, right? Or are they going to ignore it and say, that's crazy, that's weird, I need food, I'm going to make my bread of leaven, I'm going to do my own thing. The people had a choice to make in the Passover, and they did. So in this passage, we read about this great moment in the history of Israel. And we also, what I like about this, is that they, it talks about how they are to remember it how they are to celebrate this this great celebration, again, which Jesus uses, and, and which we see in the Bible, they tie it to Passover. Hundreds and hundreds of years later, this passage with the people were celebrating at the time of Jesus, still to that very day, were putting into practice, which we read about in Exodus right here, they were doing, and Jesus participates in that and represents that. But they, when they would gather and they do all these practices at that time, they were, what were they doing? They were remembering. What God had done. They remember what God had done to create a new life and a new nation. Passover was a defining moment, one that would affect the Israelites for the rest of their existence. In fact, it still does today. So when they celebrate, even to this very day, people still celebrate Passover. Do you know that? You can actually go to like Jewish holiday, you know, celebrations of Passover. I saw it. And there are even um, Jewish folks that are Christians who do. Passover ceremonies, and again, it's usually Easter time, because that's more of the time that happens, and you can actually participate in it. Let's flip to Leviticus 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Pointing on Exodus 12, that there was this, this considerable amount of time and in, in, in description of what the people were to do because of what God had done. People of Israel, remember what God did this day. Remember the new birth that you were given as a nation in this month, this new month for you, this new year for you. When you do all these things, keep doing this because, unfortunately, people, we, we forget things, don't we? Pretty easily, right? Anybody else here feel like that? We forget. God is establishing a new holiday, a celebration, a remembrance. And it was important. So much so that in Exodus it says, you, this will be an ordinance for you and your children. Your children are going to ask you, why are we doing this, Dad? Why are we still sacrificing these animals and doing these celebrations? And it says, here's how you're to answer. Right? It's describing what's going to happen years from then. Right? Years down the road. And if you remember the history of Israel, it was many, many, many years down the road. right? Because they went through the desert. Forty years. Right? Why? Why is this important? Note that in this passage in Exodus, this major, crucial point in the history of Israel, God said, you're going to have a time, where you're going to look back, and you're going to remember, and you're going to continuously remember and celebrate and think back, even to 2017, 
this year people will be celebrating and remembering what happened in Exodus chapter 12, and they're going to practice it because this is what the Bible says to do. Why? It helps us to remember. It's important to remember, to look back, and to give thanks, and to recognize what God has done for us and also through us. Leviticus chapter 23, another great passage, if you ever want to go back and study the different festivals of the holidays of Israel, Leviticus chapter 23. Someone could read Leviticus chapter 23, starting in verse 1, and going to, uh, let's see, uh, verse 8. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. Can you read that? Leviticus chapter 23. If not, I'll, go. I'll read it. Leviticus chapter 23, starting in verse 1, going through verse 8. Again, you guys got to remember Leviticus chapter 23. If you ever, anybody ever asks you, what were the holidays that were celebrated back in the, in the Bible? What, what were the main holidays? Leviticus 23 is just a good chapter to remember, because it may come back to it later. I'm sure we will. Uh, I'll bring it back again. Leviticus chapter 23 starts. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is a Sabbath to the Lord. Now, I just want to point out, I think I've pointed this out maybe one or two other times here. The Sabbath day for the Jewish people, for the Israelites, is a holiday. Did you catch that? These are my sacred feasts. These are my holidays. One day every week is a holiday. <laughs> Right? And I like how it's put first. So recognize that for them, and for the Jewish people today, as far as I understand it, the first and foremost, most important holiday, most important set-apart time for God is what? That one day a week, the Sabbath. We think about Christmas and New Year and all these things. For them, like they're, right, and Easter, that, those are all important for us, right? And there are, there are Jewish holidays <laughs> that are really important, but the one that comes first is that one you get every week. Verse 4, these are the Lord's appointed festivals and sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. Verse 5, the Lord's Passover, right, let's talk about that, begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Festival of Unleavened Bread begins. For that seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, and it goes on. There are other passages here, different festivals that God lays out. If you just read through Leviticus 23, we don't have time to go through it all right now. And that was not my intention. But the holidays were given to help people remember what God had done and what God was doing. Again, the first major festival after the Sabbath was what? In Leviticus 23. And this chapter is all about these are the appointed times that God has set for the people to celebrate or to remember. Number one, besides the Sabbath, was, just read it, Passover. Keep doing this. Why? So that you remember. So that you remember, you continuously remember what God has done. And you continue, I would also say, holidays like Passover and like others are to help us to remember to trust God. Isn't that interesting that we have holidays? Maybe sometimes we think about holidays as a time just to take time off, not have to go to school, not have to do anything. The holidays or the festivals of the Bible are, and if you go throughout Leviticus 23, are to help us to remember what God has done. I believe they're also to help, to help us to remember to trust God. Hey, God brought us out of that before, didn't he? He can do it again. God can do it again. There are also some harvest feasts we didn't talk about. Some of the different harvests. Of course, back then, it was an agrarian society, so they, especially so they're bringing in their first fruits of the ground, their, their crops and whatnot, and, and their, uh, their animals. And so they would bring and they would sacrifice. They give offerings to God. Commit themselves to the Lord. They can recognize what God was doing. Not just what he had done. Because that's easy, right? We can think about Christmas, for example. Remember, we just had Christmas not too long ago. We remember that Jesus was born, right? But it's easy, isn't it easy with those kind of holidays to think, well, that happened, right? But what is God doing right now in our midst? Some of these festivals in Leviticus 23, you focus on that as well. So, 
I wanted to point out just in Exodus 12 and Leviticus 23 how in the Old Testament and throughout the Bible as well, we have these points in which God says there are certain times that he set apart. Now, whether or not we celebrate all those today as Christians and all that, that's a whole discussion. But we have certain days that we do. We have Christmas. We have Easter. We have certain days that we set apart. We set aside, don't we? To remember what, what God has done for us. I want to take today, and I know we don't have a lot of time. I don't want to put us too far. I think we'll do a little more of this next week. I want to take today and part of next week as well to make this first part of the year, these first, I guess I was going to say today, but maybe next Sunday as well, to do what Passover is about, in essence, and what some of these other festivals are about. To remember what God has done for us. I want to take just a moment. You guys maybe notice my color for sheets over here. <coughs> just a few minutes today, and we'll take a little more time at the beginning of next week. And for Facebook Live, I'm not sure if they can see it over there, but we're going to do it over here. I want to take just a moment for a sec. <laughs> All right. Um, just take a couple minutes this morning. I want to think about what is it in the lost and found church that God has done. What do we remember when we gather together? What are some of the things that we think about that God has done? And I want to focus primarily upon 2016 and then as a whole. What has God done as a whole in 2016 that you think about? What has God done in and through us, the church? And this includes standing the gap and the reach of this church. And then what has God done as a whole over the past, for those that have been around a little longer, is what has God done beyond 2016 that you remember? What has God kind of brought us from? You think of the Israelites thinking back to Passover, and I can't believe that God would have worked in amazing ways to bring our ancestors out of slavery through plagues, through a miraculous intervention. Just take a minute or two. Is there anything that right off the top of your, right off the top of your head hits you as something that God has done? I'll just take a couple of them and we'll, we'll close here, but I want to at least get it started. Yeah, so Gap has been, so you think for this last year? So this experience. last year, like, I think, like, it's not the same as found the whole church here, you know? So it, standing the Gap introduces people into the church kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the way you put it? Anything else? Seeing the gaps made an impact this past year. I would just say probably what I put over here. I think you can get the whole. You could probably put some under that. But I'm just going to kind of. Yeah, obviously, over the last. You know, if you guys didn't realize, this coming May, we'll have been in Big Rapids. My family just kind of start, started started at the beginning of May 2011. So, 2017. Everybody can do math. This May we'll be here. <laughs> well, we still have six years this May. We'll have been in existence, been here in the Rapids. So that's kind of, for me, that's this side. Maybe you've only been here for a year, maybe you've been here for a couple weeks, whatever. That's this for me. I want us to be thinking about where has God brought us and what has he done in and through us here? How has God shown up for this past year? Anything else? What else over here has God done in 2016? Over here. 
past several years. Anything else? so crucial that we, be, we are a supportive community, so we see people that are finding that, also we're being that, continuously being that, finding our place in the supportive community. As lost and found as a whole, and their outreach is standing the gap, um, that's very important. And hopefully we've done that over here too, but that's been a constant. I know, I'm going to put down salvation, I guess S, and it's kind of weird, I don't like the weird saying salvation, but you get what I'm saying, people coming to the Lord. And this isn't just under a gap per se, I know it kind of looks like it, but we've seen especially through staying in the gap, but as a part of Lost and Found, as a whole, over the last several years, I can think of a couple of people who have gotten baptized and also who have come to know the Lord. <clears throat> I think that's exciting. So this is overall part of Lost and Found in our history. This has happened, and that's exciting. God has done that for us, through us, because of us, in people's lives. That's exciting. Anything else? Maybe real quick, and then again, I'll give you some time until next week to think about. Because I want to fill this up. I want to. This is again like Passover. They're thinking in Passover, and the other festivals, even on the Sabbath. What would you celebrate on the Sabbath? What do you remember on the Sabbath? You think about that? I mean, that was mentioned over there in twenty-three. What do you remember on the Sabbath? Is it kind of a part of it? Right. So God's cre God created, right? And so you're thinking about God. God created all this. And then there's this last day, God rested. So you're thinking about God, right? So when we do this, we're doing this. This is a this is a very practical task. I want us thinking. It's easy to sit back and go, yeah, I kind of know. But like, I really want to like flash it out. So we all are together. I want you to hear. My heart is is that we come together and get on the same page. I think I've lost and found. I've not always done a great job of doing that. I want us. I want to do better at that. And this is just one of a few ways we can maybe start to do that a little better is to start thinking more along the lines of what is our shared, what are we saying? Maybe we didn't realize that for some people this is a supportive community and they could share about well, how that was supportive. Or they didn't realize, yeah, we really have some diversity in who we've had connect that, of course, staying in the gap, we know that. We've also had here on a Sunday morning. Maybe you didn't even know, you haven't been around very long, you know we've had some baptism and some salvation. That should be something we see here, or this year, 2017, that should be a big thing. That should be a part of what the church is. But I share all that to get us on the same page. So what I want to do is I want to hand out these are to remind us all of the new life that God has given to us in the new year. And I also want to be, as we have them, I know you can you know, give them Heidi. I've got a whole bunch of them. I know she really needs one of them. So as you have these, think back on the message. Oops, sorry. Think back on um, use them, you know, whatever, annoy your roommates, whatever you want to do. But the point of this is that you remember that God has given us new life. This is a new year. And so as we begin the new year, I want to start off by thinking about these things. We're going to come back to it again next week. We're thinking back. Because if we're gonna if we're gonna eventually, eventually, we're starting to really plan out where we're going and thinking about where we're going and praying about where we're going, I believe, hopefully you're with me on this, we need to know where we've been, right? We need to see what, what has God already been doing? What, how has God already been working in our midst? What are some of the gifts, the passions, what are some of the things that he's really brought fruit out of that we've already done, or we've already been a part of? Where has he brought us to, right, so that he can look forward? 
So the little noisemakers are for a way for us to celebrate and also to remember so that when we start looking forward as a community here and as we have some other people who will be joining us again next week and in a few weeks and we have new people coming, we're on the same page to be able to celebrate together these awesome things that God has been doing. And but also, we can think about and be excited about what God is going to be doing through us and us. We can set some goals. We can reach those goals. We can attain those together because you know what we're about. And that comes back to this. Just real quick on this sheet uh, before we finish. Um, we're going to have a, on Sunday, January 22nd at 1230, so right after our gathering here, we're going to have a monthly planning meeting. Uh, I've specifically invited those that have been a part of Lost and Found for quite some time um, that really kind of like were beginners of it or they really are, have been around already to that event. I definitely want to have the core people. Um, but I want everybody, everybody that wants to be there to be there. If you want to be there, you want to be a part of this kind of core group planning meeting, you can stick around. After the gathering on the 22nd, we're going to pray. We're going to connect a little more. We're going to be do, doing more community building as a whole on Sunday mornings, um, but in this group too. Because eventually, just so you guys all have it in your mind, Lost and Found Church, as we're growing, as we're kind of getting a little more structured, we're eventually going to have monthly leadership team or a board meeting. So this is until we kind of have that formalized. This is kind of going to take that place, take the place of that, so the initial steps to get that going. So if you want to be a part of that, you want to come and share your thoughts. I encourage you to come. And then we have community meal at the end of the month, a couple other events. Um, I really, really want to talk to those that are interested or have expressed interest in membership, um, even if you don't really know much about it. We're going to have a membership seminar. We're just going to do it one day, several hours, but we'll get it out of the way. You guys will learn about what it means to be a member of a church, because that's one of my goals this year is we have a solid group of members here at the church. Um, I know I've already been my membership. The so these are some things you can take it with you. I invite friends out to uh, community meals, Super Bowl parties, some other stuff. Looking for some babysitters for this idea I have for a date night. You guys can look at that. Hey, I, I was going to say, I got a few of you. I know we can get you on that. So <laughs> again, because I believe that part of our, our outreach we have been, and this is just me, is one of our biggest focuses, or a couple of our big, what's, what's the plural focus? What is the focus on? Yeah. Like I can say focus on. Focus on. <laughs> we have a college ministry where we have a big passion to reach young adults. I believe we also, because of our makeup and who we are, we have an opportunity to reach young families. And so we're going to do, I want to try this event, I want to do this event where we're going to reach out to people who have kids and maybe just need a break. If we can get some babysitters to help with that and offer a date night, free child care, that would be an opportunity to do that. That's what that's about. So, and that's to benefit people that are here in this room right now. We'll find other people to babysit your kids. <laughs> All right, with that, uh, anything else for the good of the group? We kind of got started late, went a little long, but... Well, I'm excited to start this new year with you all, celebrating with our awesome sounds we can make with those things, and, and uh, just, just focusing back upon, looking at the scripture, and seeing how God has called us to remember. It helps, it really encourages, even call, commanded his people back in the Old Testament to practice these things, to go back and remember. That's what we did this morning, we started, to make a practice of, uh, for this first part of the year, just to think back on what God has done, we can celebrate it, we can think on it, and that in turn will help us to think about who we are as we go forward. So with that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for what you've done in our lives. God, I pray that you would take this church in your hands and that you would mold it and shape it into what you want it to be. That you reveal clearly the direction that you have for us. And I'll keep praying it in the name of Jesus that you would send new people here, that you would build, build up those that are already here, and you'd help each person that's here this morning, as well as those that are usually connected here that are not here this morning. Help them find their place in the work of this church. If they haven't found it already, or maybe they need to explore, they want to explore something new, they can do that. They would encourage that. You would, you would exhort them to do that. You would give them the power and power of the Holy Spirit to do it. And Lord, we all as a community lift this church in your hands. God, we trust it to you. As we find it as a home for us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen.